Alright. All righty. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, to the saints that we don't even know about out there. You know what I'm saying? Peace to the saints. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Yeah. Baby girl. Yeah. Give me a, you know what I'm saying? Over there for me. You know what I'm saying? They try to do some work. You know what I'm talking about? They got to do a little work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My wife ain't here to hold me down. You know what I mean? Oh, bro, that's right. She out here and she ain't said nothing to nobody. She's running right. Yeah, I just asked her. I was like, I was like, did you uh did you get away? She was like, Man, we've been in this training all day. Then after training, we go to dinner. Yeah, you know I was there, and then after dinner, it's like nine o'clock at night. And she's like, I go right to bed because I gotta wake up in the morning and get the training. I'm like, Oh yeah, they they making sure y'all don't get into no trouble. <laughs> yeah, y'all ain't about to be partying on our dime. Yeah, buddy, I think it's funny. <laughs> somehow she partied. Somehow she already on a vacation. I mean, on a uh, work trip, she didn't spend five hundred dollars already. I'm looking like I don't understand. Like, what are you buying? That's crazy. Everything should be paid for. Tell you, mm, I man, so. for four days, bro. I spent like thirty dollars out of my own pocket. I ain't do nothing. Bro. Yeah, when I go on my work trip, bro, I don't spend no money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be looking at them like, nah, go ahead, fork it up. You know what I'm saying? I got my own corporate card now. My first trip, though, I didn't have my corporate card. Yo, I'm waiting on mine. Actually, I'm supposed to meet this lady soon. The thing's supposed to be coming through the mail. Yeah, buddy. I'm like, yeah, charge it up. Bop, bop, bop. I'm hungry. Bop, bop, bop. You know what I'm saying? All right. So we've been, you know what I'm saying? We 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 ducked one of the weeks, but let's let's go ahead and kind of recalibrate, figure out where we were. So we dealt with uh last time we 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 spoke, we dealt with um king hezekiah so if you remember king hezekiah he was the king he was being besieged by the king of assyria the king of assyria came in tried to punk him out uh and king hezekiah was uh, a little bit resistant let me see if we can get this on the screen there we go king hezekiah was a little bit resistant um and after a while he broke and he was like, you know what? Fine, I'll pay the tribute. So he started getting the tribute ready. He started to pay tribute to the king of Assyria. But then the king of Assyria came out. And he started speaking to the people. So if you remember, king of Assyria, he was speaking to the people from the wall. Right? And as he was speaking to the people, was he, was, he was trying to speak. Huh? It was the king's messenger. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, the king of Assyria, not directly, but through his messengers, was speaking to the people. And he used... Uh, he used the Hebrew language. You know what I'm saying? So he is talking to us in our language, but he was talking some big trash. You know what I'm saying? That boy was talking all the time. Like, man, don't think Hezekiah gonna save y'all. Don't think Egypt gonna save y'all. Trying to wait, trying to trying to rely on Egypt is like leaning on a broken, like on a broken rod. Yeah. That thing uh, that thing will turn into a little pointy slice. You know, sometimes the sticks, you break a stick and it get it gets it's, it's sharp. You know what I'm saying? He said it's like leaning your hand on a sharp stick. That thing gonna poke you through, right? Then he starts talking about, oh, and Yah, you think Yah gonna save you? You know what I'm saying? Yah didn't save your brother, right? That's how he looked at it, cause he looked at, he thought, he thought the way our brethren was ser serving Yah was the appropriate way to serve Yah. So he's looking like, man, Yah didn't save y'all. Yahuwah gonna save you? Yahuwah didn't save your brethren? None of these other gods of any of these other nations saved them. So what makes you think your God gonna save you? And then he started, then he tried to snitch on uh, Hezekiah. He's like, especially when Hezekiah been turned tearing down his altars. Because remember, he thought he thought we serve him like the like the northern kingdom serve. Remember, they set up altars anywhere. Anybody could be a priest. So he ain't looking at it, looking like he tore down the altars. He don't realize he's like, no, nah, no, nah, he tore down them other altars. He didn't tear down none of y'all altars, right? But he don't realize. 
So the king of Assyria, through his messengers, was speaking to us. Uh, and we had told him at one point, we was like, no, 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 man, talk to us in the Syrian tongue. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Talk to us in your language, man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to talk to you. Like, no, 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 I want all the people to hear me. You know what I'm saying? King of Assyria, his messenger, he is like, man, I want all the people to hear me. You know what I'm saying? Let's kind of see how this thing go. So we're going to pick up. We left off uh, at the end of uh, chapter 19, 2 Kings chapter 19. So we're going to pick up at 2 Kings chapter 20. At the end of it, the king of Assyria ended up getting killed. Most High God told uh, Hezekiah because Hezekiah got freaked out. And he took a letter that came from the, the king of Assyria. And he laid it out in front of... Uh, he laid it out in front of uh, the uh, the temple, yeah. right? And he spoke to the Most High God who was who dwelled in between the cherubim. That's what his prayer said. His prayer said, "I'm praying to the one who dwell in between the cherubim." Right? That's that superstition. He is looking at it. He heard what Moses said. He read what Mer Moses said, and he stuck to it. He's like, "Okay." Moses said he dwelled between the cherubim. Guess what? That's what I'm praying to then. Right? So he went right to the temple. He laid it out. He started crying out to him. And then uh, at the same time, he sent some of his messages like, man, go get old Isaiah. Cause remember, Isaiah, the one that got him hyped up. He believed Isaiah. Isaiah was like, you know what I'm saying? No, don't worry about it. You'll be all right. He looking like, yeah, I'm going to be all right. Then all of a sudden, he get besieged. He don't look like he's going to be all right. He looking like, man, somebody go get Isaiah. I'm about to go talk to God. Isaiah, you know what I'm saying? He didn't even show up in person. He just sent, you know what I'm saying? Just sent him back. Like, no, nah, it's going to be all right. Everything going to be good. You know what I'm saying? So the most high guy, he ended up doing exa exactly what he told Isaiah. He sent, uh, he sent, uh, he sent, uh, you know what I'm saying? He sent a warrior, you know what I'm saying? A heavenly warrior to kill all the people that was in the field surrounding, surrounding, uh, Judah. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, Jerusalem rather. And then after that, he, uh, he sent a, a rumor so that, uh, the king of Assyria, he, he rolled back to his land and then got killed. You know what I'm saying? He got killed by his own sons. <laughs> I mean, huh? That's right. Yeah, he went back because he heard it was a rumor. It ended up being killed. That's exactly what the Most High God said. So Hezekiah, now let's go ahead and pick. Hezekiah is one of our more righteous kings. Yeah, it's one of the more righteous kings. It's one of the, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the models. Mm -hmm. It's 2 Kings chapter 20. Give me verse 1. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and pick it back up. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, set thine house in order. For you shall die and not live. Uh huh. He went to the wall and prayed unto Yahuwah, saying, "I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now." Hold on. So go back. I think you broke up a little bit. So you said, "He said, hold on. Set your he the 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 Most High God told Hezekiah, set your house in order because of what? You shall die and not live." He said, "Because you're gonna die and not live." So he just told him that. I like to believe he just came out of nowhere with that thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's probably rare that you hear from the Most High God than a prophecy come to Isaiah. Isaiah show, thus says Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and set your house in order. You know what I mean? You're going to die. You ain't going to live. And you looking like, where in the world did that come from? Watch how Hezekiah react. He's like, <laughs> Then he turned his wall and prayed to Yahuwah, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how Remember how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. So uh huh. Hezekiah wept sore, and it came to pass. And Hezekiah wept sore. Watch this. And it came to and it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out in the court that the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, "Turn again and tell Hezekiah the the captain of my people, thus says Yahuwah, the God uh -huh. of thy father, I gave." I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Thou shalt go up into the house of Yahuwah, and I will act fifteen years. And I delivered thee, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, "Take a lump of figs." And they took and laid it upon the boil. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah. What shall be the sign of you who will me and that I shall Right, so we are talking about this on the last fellowship call. Right? You remember on the last fellowship call, we had we 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 kind of talked a little bit about it. Uh, you know what I'm saying, about signs. Right? And we uh, you know what I'm saying, the sister asked, she said, she said, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, I'm in the middle about asking for a sign from the most high God. 
right? She's like, is it appropriate to ask the most high God for a sign? And I told her, you know what? Honestly, I don't really know because it is a thing called tempting God. That's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? Most high God tell you something and you tempt him. You test him. He ain't supposed to do that, right? However, we do see multiple th times through the book where people ask for signs, right? Gideon being one and Hezekiah is another good example right here where he asked the most high God for a sign, right? It doesn't always turn out bad. Um, in fact, in these scenarios, it turns out good. And then there was one scenario that we read recently for King Ahaz, right? Which is the, the great, um, is, uh, Ahaz was the, uh, the, the father of, uh, Hezekiah and King Ahaz was given a sign. He was offered a sign by the most high God. And he said, I don't want to tempt you. Right. So that's him offered a sign. He said, I don't want to tempt God. And that ended up working out bad for him. Right. Then you got one where, you know what I'm saying? You got a couple where they wanted a sign and it ended up working good. But then it also is a thing called tempting God, right? Where you testing God. So it's a tricky thing. Um, and as we discussed on the call, you know what I'm saying? We know that, we know that, uh, Yahushua said, I'm paraphrasing, but Yahushua said to, uh, to Thomas, he said, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who believe and don't see. Right. So when I read that, I, I, I look at it as the, 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 uh, more significant blessing perhaps is attached to those who believe even without having the most high God show them a miracle um so yeah you know what i'm saying so you see here hezekiah was like all right for sure so you're gonna heal me right you was breaking up a little bit so i'm gonna try to recap what you read you know what i'm saying but you uh you know what i'm saying the most high god looking like yo you about to die hezekiah he immediately get in front of the most high god start praying right at that point baby girl no -uh, not right there come over here so at that point you know what i'm saying uh, the most high God, he turned from what, what he was about to do. And he said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and heal you. So then he took some, you know what I'm saying? He told him to get some figs and he gonna, he gonna heal him up with them figs. So then he was like, okay, hold on. You already told me I'm gonna die. So what's the sign that this is going to work out for me? Right. And now let's see what the most high God give him as a sign. <clears throat> he still know when he's going to die. He said, I'll give you 15 more years. That thing's sad too. <laughs> Yeah, that's important to 15 more years. Because that's going to come up a actually in a little bit. So, yeah, he told him 15 more years. He said, what's the sign? Watch this. And Isaiah said, this sign, this sign shalt thou have of Yahuwah, that Yahuwah will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the, swat, shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? <clears throat> and has right. So he's asking them. He is like, okay. You want a sign? Which one you want? Let it go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees. So he's talking about what we would know as like a sundial, right? So you got something, you know what I'm saying? You put it, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, they used to tell us that the Greeks did this stuff. So like you put this sundial, you know what I'm saying? It's before the Greeks even was running anything at this point, right? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You put something in the ground and then you have something sticking straight out and then the, the, the sun casts a shadow on it. And then that shadow almost acts like a clock, right? Because of how the sun is positioned. You know what I'm saying? So it'll go, and that shadow almost acts like a clock. And so he's saying, listen, the sun casting the shadow is really only supposed to go in one direction. But he said, what you wanted to do? You wanted to go forward 10 degrees, or do you want it to go backwards 10 degrees? Right? Let's see what King Hezekiah said. And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. Right? He said, look, that thing gonna go forward anyway. You know what I'm saying? That thing was, we, we ain't gotta do nothing and it was gonna go forward. I ain't never seen this thing go backward. That's what he's looking at. He looking like over time, it's gonna go forward 10 degrees. Now, you might make it go faster, but over time, it's gonna go forward 10 degrees. But listen, I've never seen that thing go backwards. Ain't nobody ever heard of nothing like that. So he said, make that thing go backwards. You know what I'm talking about? If you're going to do something, go ahead and make it. You know what I'm saying? Make me a believer. Make that thing go backwards. Watch this. 
And Isaiah the prophet cried unto Yahuwah, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Right. So when they say Isaiah cried unto Yahuwah, that means that he was sitting there praying, you know what I'm saying? Like crying out to him. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, that thing went backwards. Watch what happened next. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them. <clears throat> Wait. And at that time, Barodach Beladan, the son of Beladan, king of Babylon, sent letters in, and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things. The silver, the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all that the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures, there was nothing in his house nor in his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet <clears throat> unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, what have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, all the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not, that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, hear the word of Yahuwah. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried unto Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says Yahuwah. And of thy sons, and of thy sons, that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Right? So listen to what he said. Right? Hezekiah, he's well now. He's healed. He said, yo, yo, yo. You know what I'm saying? I got a letter from the Babylonians. Why don't y'all come on? Come on, by. Let me show y'all what I'm working with. He showed him the whole house. I think in Chronicles, it tell you they came because they heard that, you know, Hezekiah whooped out Assyria, and Babylon didn't like Assyria. Right, so they, they they looking at it. they look like let me see you know what I'm saying? see what's going on. He's like, yeah, come on, come on through. Let me show you. Right, and he shows them everything. After he shows them everything, Isaiah pop up and Isaiah is like, yo yo, who is that? Where they come from? Oh, that's the Babylonians. You know what I'm saying? What what are you showing? Oh, I show them the whole thing. Ain't that matter of fact? There ain't no treasure that we have. I ain't showed them. They was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, all that, they're going to take it. Everything you showed them, they're they going to take that. And your sons going to be eunuchs for them. They're they going to be serving them. Right? So when we look at this, we talked about it la or the last time we, we was together. We talked about it. We talked about how sometimes there's right and wrong. And then sometimes there's just consequences. Right? In this case, he didn't necessarily commit a sin by bringing them into the house and, and showing them everything. Right. However, there is a consequence that come with that because now they're aware. And maybe the Babylonians at this time are allies. Right. At this time, maybe the Bab Babylonians looking like, no, nah, we all good. But one day it's going to be a king. And he's going to look at all of the chronicles and he's going to see. Oh, Israel got it like that? We're going to go take them boys over. And that's what Isaiah is telling him. He's looking like, okay, well, you showed them all that. I just want you to know, Most High God showed me some things too. He showed me that all your son going to be serving that man. You know what I'm saying? All of them going to be serving the king of Babylon. And they taking all y'all stuff. Right? So now watch how Hezekiah reacts. Remember. He was told, you about to die, you're not going to live. Then he was told, nah, I'll give you 15, I'll give you 15 years. Right? So now watch how he reacts to hearing that Babylon going to come and take all the stuff. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, <clears throat> good is the word of Yahuwah which thou hast spoken. And he said, it is if peace and truth be in my days. Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all, the, and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Right. So his reaction was, OK, so it's going to happen in the, in the days of my kids. Right. It's not going to happen in my day. 
He said, well, all right, well, that's good word. Because he said, listen, if it's going to happen, but the most high God spaced it out so it don't happen in my day, well, it's good. He didn't have a mindset of, uh, of it's not going to happen. His mindset was, that's what most high God said. You got you to gotta look at it from his point of view. I've been put through the ringer and I've been shown that the most high God do what he say. No matter how it look, the most high God going to come through with his end of the promise. Right? So he looking like, okay, most high God said we going, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got to worry about the Assyrians, but the Assyrians came and besieged us. I freaked out, but guess what happened? All them boys dropped dead and they ran off and the king got killed. It worked out just how the most high God said, even when I thought this thing was about to fall apart. Then he was told he going to die. He cried out to the Most High God. Most High God was like, all right, I'll give you 15 years. Right? And then he got healed. He's sitting there like, okay, no, the Most High God, he's good money for what? If he said, the Most High God is good money. So now you got to imagine that same man being told, oh, yeah, all this is about to be taken by Babylon. <coughs> he's looking like, oh, that's definitely going to happen. It's no, there's, no, there's no question on whether it's going to happen because I trust that the Most High God, when the Most High God say something, it's going to happen. So his mindset was, oh, if we know it got to happen, at least it's not happening in my day. That's mercy. He looking at it like, oh, the most high God still looking out for me because I know it got to happen because he just said it. But if it got to happen, at least you can push that thing back a little bit. All right. Well, it ain't going to happen in my day. That's good. Suck for my kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Suck for my kid. But listen, it got to happen. I prefer it happen later than happen now. Right? So he looked at it like, like that was a blessing. You know what I'm saying? That was his mind. His mindset was like, well, that's a blessing. Blessing it didn't happen in my darn day. That's what he looked at. Right? So that takes us to the next king, right? That king Hezekiah. That his son now is Manasseh. So let's keep reading. This is a uh, second. All right. Let's, uh, did we finish out? Hezekiah, yeah, he wanted yeah. to. Yeah, Sister Sharon said he wanted to enjoy his little 15 years. Yeah, he wanted to enjoy it. You gotta look at him. He had a long, he had a long, hard kingdom. You know what I'm saying? He came in trying to get stuff together, but he came in and during war times. Right? It's not like it's not like he came in during a time of peace. He came in in war time. When he stepped in the dough, Ahaz, his dad, had just got just got taken out. You know what I'm saying? By Assyria in uh by Syria and uh, uh, Syria and Israel. Then Assyria came and took them out. So he under the threat of Assyria who feel like they encroaching right next door. Then all of a sudden they start picking on him. So this whole time he dealing with war and controversy and drama. You know what I'm saying? Most High God making them feel like it's all about to be over. Then the Most High God save them in the middle of nowhere. Then after that he feel like he about to die. Then he, okay, you got 15 more years. Then he finally feel like, okay, we good. He invite the Babylonian. Then he tell, okay, they taking everything. This man looking like, look, I just want to take a rest. I just want to relax. Yeah, give me my little 15 years. I'll take it. Yeah, Sister Pamela said, wouldn't that give him time to prep his sons for the demise? Well, let's read about one of his sons. Let's see if let's see uh, let's see how well they got prepped. This is uh this is uh second second uh Kings chapter twenty one. Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, <clears throat> and reigned five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephziba, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the. Whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Hold on, read read that again because you were breaking up. And Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzeba, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father destroyed and he right so he started to build up again the high places that hezekiah destroyed right so you can see immediately he going in the wrong direction 
But this is a good story. Watch out. Watch, watch, watch what happened with uh, King Manasseh. For he built up the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up the altars of Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. <clears throat> and he built altars in the house of the Lord, which the Lord said in Jerusalem, I will put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in two counts of the house of in two counts in two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made right. So if you think when you when you hear him say he built altars for all the hosts of heaven, he worshiped oh, wow. angels and stars and stuff. Right. So he's worshiping multiple gods. Um, astrology, astronomy, or whatever. He's looking at these things. He's saying, okay, these is angels. He and what we would look at him as is angels or messengers of the most high God. Right? But he's worshiping these things. Right? Keep going. He built altars to him and he put them inside of the, the, the temple. Right? So he's just making a mess. Uh, and he made his son pass through the fire. And observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. Right? So he killed his son by sacrificing them in fire. Right? And he's dealing with familiar spirits. That means he, when you're talking about familiar spirits, that means, you know what I'm saying, he's trying to talk to the dead and all types of stuff. So he's into all of it. He's into all of it. You ever met one of them people that was just down for whatever? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I was reading this book that, you know what I'm saying, you can do tarot card readings. So I start doing that. Then the next week you talk to them, they all in the, to the D. I ain't talking about the regular astrology. I ain't talking about like, I ain't, I ain't talking about just, you know what I'm saying? Read my horoscope on the website. I'm talking about that deep stuff where they like break it out. They got cards too. You know, the tarot cards and stuff, the astrology got cards too. The real ones it, into that deep stuff. Then the next time you go, they burning sage and doing all the other stuff. The next time they doing yoga and some other stuff and all, they're making a, that's what they do. They just down whatever, whatever's clever, they down. Got the little salt rocks. Oh, it gives me energy. You know what I'm saying? Whatever is darn clever, they down for it. They got the stone. They got a little stone dream catchers hanging from their thing. Whatever is darn clever, whatever it takes, they down. They good. Right? They working on, they talking about their ancestors. You know, our African ancestors, they did X, Y, and Z. They down for whatever. Yeah, the African ancestors was exiled too. They're looking at they're looking at uh they're looking at what's the uh what's the thing they voodoo. You know what I'm saying? They get into voodoo. You know what I'm saying? It's another one that's like voodoo. What's it called? I don't know. <clears throat> one of my friends, she I forget what it's called. Hoodoo is it? Hoodoo, voodoo. It's like voodoo. I think it's called hoodoo or something like that, or hulu or who who I don't know, something like that. But uh you hoodoo. what is it? universe yeah it's hoodoo yeah the other one is hoodoo you know what i'm saying and uh and uh one of my friends you know what i'm saying she's gonna tell me she was like oh no no somebody posted something somebody posted was like did y'all know moses it was something to the effect of did y'all know moses actually learned everything from um the hoodoo tradition and so then he passed that along i was like no that's foolishness you know what I'm saying? That's foolish. Listen, say, let me say you some time. That's foolish. Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? That's some darn foolishness. Here's another one I just read. Uh, they was like, did y'all know that much of the Ten Commandments comes from the Egyptian, uh, I forget what it's called. The Egyptian, uh, it's like a, huh? Not the Book of the Dead, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's uh it's 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 like the 42 it's like i think there's like 40 some commandments that egyptians got but it's like okay take your time let's everybody just relax take your time let's just look at it what are the 10 commandments it's gonna tell you. you know what i'm saying don't kill don't steal these are universal things try to act like it came from that okay well where they get it from most like god told adam all this stuff at the beginning most of this stuff at the beginning. Adam had the Sabbath at the beginning. Right? What are the Ten Commandments didn't, didn't Adam have? 
Right? Noah was told don't kill. You know what I'm saying? When Cain, when Cain killed, he had to be judged for it. He said, I'm going to put it back on you. Sevenfold. Right? Everybody knew killing was wrong. When uh when Cain's son, uh two ball Cain, was it two ball? I'm not sure. When Cain, oh, let's grab it real quick. Let's just see. This is uh <laughs> this is uh Genesis chapter four. Give me verse. Give me, give me Genesis chapter. It ain't, do I want yeah Genesis chapter four? Give me verse. Give me verse thirteen. It's Genesis chapter four, verse thirteen. I might be going down too far, but let's see what thirteen says. See if I jump too far. <clears throat> what do you think it was when, when, when Cain saw Abel? And the most high God gave, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, favor this sacrifice. What do you think that was? Thou shalt not covet. Ten commandments ain't nothing darn new. What do you think came first? Egypt or Adam? <laughs> ain't here and play with these people. You know what I'm saying? They be thinking they got something. They look at it, they read it. Oh, I read this and it's the same as this. It must have come from here. Stop saying stupid. Just, just stop. Because you don't know the history of the book. That's the problem. These people don't know the book. They be looking like, this is what they look at. Moses just came up with it. Moses ain't come up with this stuff. What's wrong with you? Most High God gave it to Moses. And the Most High God been around since the beginning. So what came first? The Most High God or your silly 42 commandments or whatever it is? Your darn book of the dead. My book give me everless, ever, everlasting life. What am I looking for the book of the dead for? I'm a sort of God of the darn living. What's wrong with these people? This is a uh, this is a uh, Genesis chapter three, Genesis chapter four, verse thirteen. And Cain said unto Yahuwah, "My punish my punishment is greater than I can bear. Yahuwah, uh huh. Thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. From the face shall I be hid." And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And Yahuwah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Right? <laughs> so that tell you to kill it. He tell him right now, don't kill him. Thou shalt not kill right there. What you think came first? He told him, listen, if you kill him, it's going to come back on you sevenfold. What do you think that message is saying? Don't do you bet not kill. Right? Okay, let's keep going. Let's see if, let's see if the message is still there. And Cain went out from the presence of Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived in Enoch. And he built a city in the name of the city. City after the name of his son Enoch. <clears throat> and unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mahuhilel, and Mahuhilel begot Methuselel, Methu Methusael, and Methusael begot Lamech, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zilla. And Ada bare the, the ball. He was the father of such a, and of such that have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. And he was the father of all those that handled the harp and organ. And Zilla also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artifact in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. And Lemek said unto his wives, Ada and Zilla, hear my voice. Who? His wives. What's his name? Lemek. Right? This is Lemek. Watch with Lemek. I thought it was Tubal Cain, but no, it's Lemek. Lamech said unto his wives, what did he say? Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken Look at my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding. He Hell said, I've done you. what? Slain a man to my wounding. He said, I killed somebody. But he said, I did it to my wounding. In other words, this man was trying to hurt me and I killed him. Right? Watch this. And a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly lament seventy and sevenfold. Right? So clearly, 
he knew thou shalt not kill. He killed a man. And he is like, but it was an accident. He was attacking me. This man was trying to kill me. That's the only reason I killed him. So if Cain can put sevenfold on people trying to kill Cain, then in my case, it should be 77. It's important that we understand this stuff. Many people, these people, if you don't know the scripture, these people will try to run circles around your darn brain. You can't let them do it. You got to do, you got to work harder and tell me about what came from darn, you know what I'm saying? What came from darn, the 42, whatever it's called. You know what I'm saying? A book of the darn dead. You're going to have to work a lot harder than that. Talking about some darn hoodoo. Ah, stupid darn people. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They just say silly stuff. And I don't like because they make smart people believe them. My friend is a, she's a smart young lady. But you, but because you got all this silly stuff that just spinning around the world, then it's like now she out here believing some stupid stuff, giving inter entertaining some of this silly stuff. Ain't her fault. That's y'all darn fault. Teaching this madness, and you know darn better. You read it yourself. Don't even believe it. You know what I'm saying? You don't even believe none of this stuff is fact, and you got the nerve to try to put it over the book. That's all fact. That's crazy. Let's go back. This is uh, where we is at. Second King chapter what 21? 21 6. <clears throat> right? So the king Manasseh, it's the son of Hezekiah. He's down for whatever. Like whatever clever, give it to me. I'll, I'll worship it. You know what I'm saying? I sacrifice my son. Whatever superstition is out there, I will do it. <clears throat> right? Let's keep going. And he made his son pass to the five observed times and used enchantments and dwelt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image in the grove that he had made in the house, of which Yahuwah said to David and to Solomon his son in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. <clears throat> Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I have given their fathers. Only I will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them. And according to do the law that my servant Moses commanded them, but they hearken not. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke by his servants, the prophet, saying, because Manasseh, king of Judah, had done these abominations, has done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and has made Judah all above all that who? Amorite. <laughs> above all that who? Amorites. It was the Amorites. You have to understand what that means. Worse than Canaan. What does that mean to us? When we was going into the land and the Most High God was preparing us, what did he say to us about the Amorites? Because of they, this land, this nation is so wicked, I'm removing them out of my sight. Right? Not because Israel is righteous. It's not because Israel is special. I'm just using Israel to punish the Amorites to get them out of this land because of the things that they do. But That's now, absolutely right. God told us, if you do these things, then I will remove you too. And that it says is here, absolutely right. That we have done worse than the ones that we kicked out. So now, if it wasn't for our righteousness that he made us take over the land, don't you think he got some other group that he don't care about their righteousness either? That he'll move y'all butts right out to? That's the mind that we got to have when we're working with God. Because he, he lets you know who he is. He don't be hiding. He lets you know exactly who he is. Listen, I'm, I'm taking you over there. It's not because of your righteousness. It's because of their wickedness that we're about to do this. And if you get wicked like them, I'm going to do the same thing to you. He told us this stuff. But we get here. And Manasseh, Manasseh's the one. Manasseh take it to levels. Ain't nobody done it before. You know what I'm saying? Manasseh went crazy. You know what I'm saying? And after that, Moses I was like, okay. He did more than the Amorites. Immediately, that should send a message to all of us. Like, oh, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. He did more than the Amorites. That's it. He fed up. Most I God talking spicy now. Let's see.
Because Manasseh, king of Judah, have done these abominations and done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and have made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such an evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever hears it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will right? So he said, listen, I'm going to put the line of Samaria and the plummet of Ahab. Remember, we talked about the plummet, right? So you go, you know what I'm saying? You got to get, you know what I'm saying? Let's take one of these. You know what I'm saying? A plummet, you take something like this, and you're going to have a weight at the end of it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have a weight at the end of it. And the weight is going to make the, you know what I'm saying? Let's just do one. It's going to make this straight. You know what I'm saying? So when you build something, let's say you're supposed to be building a, a straight wall, I can hold this up against it to know that the wall is straight because it lines up with it because gravity is pulling it down straight. You know what I'm saying? So I can line it up and be like, all right, that's straight. But if it's not straight, I'm the foreman. You built this thing up and it's not straight. What got to happen? So now the Most High God is telling us he lining us up. Anything that's not straight up and down, that boy tearing it up. He said, oh, well, I got the plummet of Samaria now. I got the line of Samaria now. You know what I'm saying? What does that tell you? The same thing that I did to Samaria, I'm about to do to your butt, right? It's about to happen. You saw what just happened to Samaria. Then he came back and he said, let me make it even more clear. He said, you ever ate something and had to clean the dish? He said, oh, I'm about to wipe you like a darn dish. <laughs> and when you wipe a dish, you wipe the front part like this and then wipe it in and get it. And then you flip that thing over and make sure you get the rest. He said, I'm wiping this thing clean, both sides of it. Right? Watch this. Read it again. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Abraham. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of my He said, I will forsake the remnant of who? My inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies because they have done that which was evil in the sight and evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt until this day. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another besides his sin wherewith he had made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and all that and all his sin which he sinned are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and, buried, and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Right. So now that's Manasseh. That was a bad boy, and I don't mean that. In the, you know what I'm saying? Usually when I say bad boy, that's like a, you know what I'm saying. He's tough. He's you know what I'm saying. He. He's sharp. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about that now. No, this was an evil one. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But the, the, the book of Chronicles give us a little bit more of his story. Right. Let's turn, let's jump over to Chronicles. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 33. That's right. Huh? That's right. I was, right. was going to bring that up. Oh, yeah. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 33. It's important because if we don't, if we don't know this is another, it's certain, it's certain stories in the book that touched me. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was reading and I was starting to understand the book, there's certain little stories in there that touched me. They like, that got to me. Like one, one was David. You know what I'm saying? When the most high God told him, you know what I'm saying? I gave you all these things and I would have done more. That was something that in, it left an impression on me when I read it. I said, you know what? That's great. Another one. When Moses, when Moses said, must we bring water out there? Rock the most I got because you didn't sanctify me. I'm saying, goodness, God is petty. But that left an impression on me when when uh, when uh, Miriam, you know, what I'm saying and, uh, and and Aaron spoke up against Moses and the most High God came back to him and was like, you know, what I'm saying I talked to a prophet, you know, what I'm saying like this. But to Moses, it's not the case. I talked to him face to face. That left an impression on me because I'm looking. I like when the most high God give me like logic. 
I'd be looking at that like, oh, well, that does make sense. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta consider that does make sense. Like it left an impression on me when we in the book of Judges, where you had the son who stole from his mama, and he went and bought a bought an idol. And then he hired his own priest and the book tell you that every man did what was right in his own eyes. That left an impression on me. Everybody out here just making it up. If you don't have a proper guidance, you will just make it up. You will just try. You will just come up with something and it'll sound convincing and people will roll with it. Remember, they had a whole they had a whole war over that boy over or not over the boy, but over, you know, what I'm saying over the stuff he tried to set up. Right. It don't take a whole lot. When you look at when you look at Yahushua and he told the woman, he said, he said, he said, it's not appropriate that I, you know, what I'm saying, get a, the food of the children to the dogs. And then the woman came back and she said, well, even the dogs get the crumbs. That thing alone, I ain't cried a lot in my life. That verse alone, when I understood it, not the first time I read it, brought tears to my eyes. I look at that and I said, oh, my God, this is another one. We're about to read now is another one that left an impression on me. Right. Because you look at it and you say, well, this is real. Right. We just read it. Oh, that was an evil boy. He's a nasty boy. He's doing all types of wild stuff and had no business doing none of it. Right. But watch this. It's Second Chronicles chapter thirty-three, verse one. When, when Moses, when Moses died, you know that, that one got me. I think that one got you when Moses died. Yeah, I think I cried when Moses died. I was like, man, my man put in so much work. He ain't even get to get in. Ain't even get to get in. You and Sharon, you know what I'm saying? You and Sharon, Sharon probably crying right now. I even like bringing up Moses in front of Sharon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. She be touched by Moses, Moses and Jonah. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, don't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? That's sharing people. Manasseh was 12 years old. <laughs> she said, don't bring this up. <laughs> Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the mm -hmm. Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. <clears throat> he weird up all altars for Baalim and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. Also he built the altars in the house of Yahuwah, whereof the Lord had said unto in Jerusalem, Shall my name be there forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also, he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft, and he dwelt and he dwelt and he dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger, and set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son in his house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so they will take the heed to do that, to do all that I have commanded them, <clears throat> according to the whole law and the statutes. According to what? The whole law. Notice you ain't say according to the Ten Commandments. You know what I'm saying? According to the dietary law. You know what I'm saying? Not according to you know what I'm saying? Not according to the uh, sacrificial law. He said, according to the whole law, that's the only thing that we've ever uh, agreed to be adhering to. Right. Go ahead. Keep going. And the ordinances by the hand. These of people, listen, you got the yeah, these people are crazy, boy. Look, you got these people breaking up. They they I, I saw I was reading this Christian website. They said the uh, oh, I can't even pronounce this weird stuff they be coming up with. It's the the no the what they call it the it's not Norwegian it's like the no it no 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 hoic no hoic no ho no no hoic maybe no hoic no hey no hoic anyway the noic law you know what I'm saying you know how they say the Abrahamic you know what I'm saying the Abrahamic law you know what I'm saying they there's like the whatever Noah's version of it is 
I read that thing. I was reading it like, what did they just try to come up with? But they break it up and they're like, well, see, Gentiles, this, this is how they look at it. Gentiles don't have to eat. Now, they're not wrong, but they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? They look like Gentiles don't have to eat according to Moses, the Mosaic law. You know what I'm saying? The Mosaic. I ain't never read Mosaic a damn. Other. When I say, when you say something Mosaic, I be thinking about the little puzzle, you know what I'm saying? You know, the mosaic type, type of paintings, you know what I'm saying, where they got? That when you say mosaic, that's what I be thinking of. But the mosaic law, you that means you got to put the painting together a certain way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they look at it, they say, the mosaic, I ain't never read mosaic. They're like, oh, well, they don't have to follow the mosaic law and the dietary law of the mosaic law. What they have to do instead is they have to fo follow the noahic law. Noic law, noic law. I don't know how you say it, but then whatever it is, that's how they said it. Hey, you got to follow the noic law. I said, you people are crazy. Y'all just be making this stuff up. They just make it up. And I'm sitting here like, where did you read this? Where'd you read the noic law? Who came up with that? As soon as somebody gets to talking to me like that, I'll tell them right off the bat, listen, you got a little bit too much tradition in you. Because I know, listen, you can tell by how people talk where they learn their stuff from. You're going to talk with the way that you learned it. <laughs> when you hear me talk, I'm talking according to the book. I'm saying something that's coming right from the book. I'm not about to be saying some stuff you never heard of. I know I'm talking to stuff that came from the streets or I came from the book. That's it. You're going to know where I'm coming from. Look, you gonna anybody calling this video, they listen to it, they gonna be like, okay, no, nah, that boy, you know what I'm saying, that boy talking like, you know what I'm saying, talking like he didn't been around some corners, and he talking like he know the book. That's it. That's the only thing you can say. I'm not gonna come to you about no 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 way, you know what I'm saying, whatever. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it and send it to y'all. These people are crazy. Keep going. Oh, don't y'all get Sister Sharon start. Goodness gracious. What y'all in the chat talking about? Delete that chat. <laughs> so Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the error and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed from before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the king of Assyria, which took He Manasseh did what now? Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in, he besought Yahuwah his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And right. So the, the book of Kings didn't have this for us. So he got taken and he was taken all the way into Babylon on fetters. You know what that means? He got hooked up on a line. And pull probably by his nose and by his ears and stuff. And now, I don't know if y'all remember when we was reading the prophecy about uh, Assyria. He was talking about Assyria with the Most High God was saying in the book of Isaiah, Assyria, the rod is his anger. But he told him at the end, he is like, I'm going to pull you back by hooks the same way that you went. And the reason why he said that is because that's how the king of Assyria, we can read history. That's how they would take people captive. They would hook them all together and pull them. The Babylonian did some foolishness like that too, right? So that's what they did to the king Manasseh. They took him back into uh, Babylon and took him captive. But watch what he did when he was taken captive. It ain't left an impression on me. And when he was in affliction, he besought Yahuwah his God and humbled him greatly before the God of his fathers. And he prayed unto him and he was entreated of him. And he heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that Yahuwah was God. Now, after this, he built a wall without the city of outside the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, encompassed about Ophel, and raised it up very great in height, and put captains of war in defense cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord. And all the altars that he had built in the mount, in the mount of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. 
And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve Yahuwah God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto Yahuwah their God only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his power. Now look at Manasseh and pay attention to what he did. He did his time. This left an impression on me, y'all. I read this in jail. Right? So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I was, you know, I was still a Christian at that time. Oh, man. I've been taken by spiritual hooks. You know what I'm talking about? And look at me. I'm sitting here. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here in Babylon. You know what I'm saying? In the jail in Babylon. Doing 25 days straight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never did this. Usually I go to jail. Little, you know, I'm the little traffic ticket, a little something, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, go ahead and bail me right up out of here. Ain't nobody had that bail for me this time, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody had that bail for me. Then I saw the judge, you know what the judge told me? The judge told me, you know what? You done been in here too many times on a lot of this silly stuff. And you got this little, you know, this other little charge that's a little different from the little traffic ticket. This one's a little more serious. Why don't you go ahead and sit your butt down, 25 days? I said, 25? I got a job. You know what I'm What you mean, 20? I sat down, I looked up, I opened up that book. I said, listen, you know what? I'm going to tell you what pushed me to God. I walk in here, I'm here for 25 days, and I know ain't nobody in here for too much longer. You know what I'm saying? People in there maybe a month, a couple months. It's jail. I ain't prison. It's jail. I go there, I sit in there, and I got this dude sitting on the table braiding this other dude's hair. I looked at that, I said, oh, no, this is crazy. The Lord, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is, they ain't got no business. Braid nobody hair. You and I, we in the honor. prison. I will give you a little bit of forget. I, I look the other way. You know what I'm saying? You might be here for a while. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you want to. I ain't none of my business in prison. In jail? Y'all in here getting like I know you. You just got in here and I know you about to get out. <laughs> you was in the same court case and you about to get braided. You, you, you got to look that good in jail. It's something wrong. It's something wrong when that happens. When that stuff gets to happen, it's something wrong. They get you in there. You know what I'm saying? I open that thing up. I'm like, man, I ain't even leaving this room. Because I know I'm going to mess around. I'll fight one of these dudes. It was the one crip dude. or one. Of the, it was the one dude. You know what I'm saying? That I saw. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like I'm going like, to end up. I'm going to be in here fighting one of these dudes. We don't have no time for none of this foolishness. I'm looking like, look, let me just stay in here so I can do my 25 days because I ain't trying to make 25, 60. You know what I'm saying? So I look. And I start reading the thing, and I got to this. And my Christian self said, I'm Manasseh. You know what I'm saying? I'm Manasseh. But you see what Manasseh did? He made it right. He didn't just go to Babylon and then find himself in a tough spot and find out, well, I was observing times and reading my horoscope, but that didn't work. I was speaking to familiar spirits and talking to the dead, but that didn't work. Right? I had all these altars up to the host of heaven and that didn't work but none of this stuff worked but let me pray out to the most high god most high god get him up out of there and when he did he is like you know what that's how i know this god is real then from there he didn't just stop there and just was like all right i ain't gonna do nothing else wrong no he tried to clean up the mess he went down and tore up all the altars and start trying to lead people down the right path right but that's gotta, what it takes. That's real repentance. We need yeah. to go back and repair. He had a uh, he had he had his dad though. You got to think about like who his dad was. Like he, you know what I mean. He was. He, I'm pretty sure he had that context from his dad. Like well, pops used to always, you know, do right by Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying. So that definitely, I know that definitely played a part in it too. Yeah, you got something to pull from, <clears throat> right? But we have to be able to make things right. We have to be able to correct it and repair. We're not going to be able to repair everything, but we should be able to repair. We should be able to take a loss when we did folks wrong. We should be able to go back to it and be like, you know what? That was messed up. What can I do? Even if they tell you nothing, what can I do? Be vulnerable to them and be willing to take it when they say nothing and get off on you. I can't believe you did that. I ain't never going to forgive you. You got to eat that. Sometimes you need to hear that. Some of the stuff we did, it hurt people. People life still messed up so over some of the mess I did. But when I changed, many of them that I could, or at least the most I got put on my mind, I went back and I said, you know what? 
I'm different now. This ain't the way it should be. And some of them I hooked up. I tried to do something for it. It's that another. Some of them don't want nothing from me. It's that nothing. And that, and that feel bad. But I got to eat that. That's what it take. We got to make it right with people. We got to make it right with everything. The stuff we misled people to do. The power tell. Listen. The pastors that I talk to one-on-one -on -one and directly, I tell them, nah, you need to go back. You got to go back. You can't just up in one day and be like, okay, now we're going to worship on the Sabbath now. No, 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 no. You need to go back and say, no, I was wrong. I led us down the wrong path. I've been teaching that it don't matter what you do. You know what I'm saying? Most high God going to love you no matter what. That was a lie. I was a liar. I was deceived. And if you would still follow me, you know what I'm saying? If you would still let me, allow me to be over you, this is what we're going to teach from now on. You're not going to see that type of stuff because these people don't have the integrity to do it. And because they really don't have a heart of repentance. So now we look at it, we, we read Kings and we read Manasseh, and it's easy for us to judge him and look at him and be like, oh, Manasseh, evil, that's a bad boy, that's evil, right? But then when you back up and you look at the rest of this story, you say, man, he ain't no, he ain't no worse than any of us. He ain't no worse than any of us. We doing the most and continue to do the most and keep hypocriting and lying and trying to hide from God. All these different things that are going on and think we getting away with something. You can trick me. I can be tricked. That's easy, easy money to trick me. Let me tell you something. I don't even care enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm not snooping. I'm not checking on. What y'all doing on the weekends? Right? What you doing up so late? What you doing on that side of town? I'm not checking into nobody's. You think I care? My job is to teach and be there when you say you need me. That's it. Right? I'm not proactively looking and checking up and trying to, you know what I'm saying, catch nobody in no sin and all that. Mm -mm -mm. Ain't none of my business. If you can get away with it, more power to you. You not tricking God, though. You not getting around God. This stuff, something we got, ain't no different, man. We ain't no different from Manasseh. All of us are Manasseh. Matter of fact, all of us ain't Manasseh. We only Manasseh if we decide to repent like he did. Manasseh got taken to Babylon and he said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get this thing together. Just like now, our people got spread out to Babylon all over the world. Right? And the only thing the Most High God wanted us to do is exactly what Manasseh did. Humble ourselves and admit that you've been working contrary to me and I've been walking contrary to you. That's it. That's all the, that's all the Most High God looking for. But we're too stubborn as a people to do it. Keep going. What you say? Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, prayer unto his God, and the words of the seers that spake unto him in the name of Yahuwah, God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God has in, was entreated of him in all his sin, and his in the places wherein he built high places and set groves and graven images before he was humble. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon All right. So we, we're not going to go into Ammon right now. We're going to go into Ammon next week. But next we have King Ammon. All right. It's only a few more kings before the drama, the drama <laughs> starts to pop off. Right. With Babylon. All right. So Babylon, you can see Babylon is already flexing his strength after after uh, after Hezekiah died. Right, so we're gonna get see a lot more. It's about to get a lot worse. You know what I'm saying? As we get new kings of Babylon until we get to the the king Nebuchadnezzar, right? So we're gonna talk all about uh talk about all that in the next coming weeks and months because it's a lot. You got to read a lot of Jeremiah. Um, we're gonna have to read a lot of Jeremiah. We can get away with not reading as much Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah, we we gonna have to come back to a lot. You know what I'm saying? But Jeremiah. We got to read a lot of Jeremiah. Jeremiah um, so yeah, real soon. Yeah, Jeremiah coming up real soon. You know what I'm saying, Jeremiah? Sharon really, you know, really gonna be mad about this one. About Jeremiah? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on with Jeremiah. Yeah, I think Jer- Jeremiah probably had him and Ezekiel. Like, well, what's written? What's written? Probably had the most difficult life. Yeah, buddy. Any questions? Any questions? So we, Darren said, oh, no. You hear these boys? You hear these boys talk about their prophets? Talk about their prophets of God. You know what I'm saying? Like, these boys ain't got this in the book had hard lives. Like, mm-hmm. easy. Don't nobody read this book. You don't want to be no prophet. That ain't nothing that ain't you brag about. That ain't a hard life. You look at uh, Hosea. You can even look mm-hmm. at Moses. You look at all of these. You look at Jonah. You know what I'm saying? To be a prophet. That's why they call it the burden of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right? The burden of the Lord that was given to Hosea. The burden of the Lord that was given to Jonah. So these boys out here talk about their prophets and doing all of that talking. Um, and carrying no burden. That ain't crazy. Ain't carrying no burden. It's different. Why are we not outside ministering? If is that a real question? <laughs> we uh uh we don't we don't go outside and minister because that's not that's not a uh that's not a model that we see in the book. I I think a lot of that stuff. My this is my opinion when I when I say that I think a lot of that stuff come from pride. Right, people people want to be seen, want to feel like they're doing something. So so they 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 post up and they stand out and they get to, you know, bothering people. If people they mind their business walking down the street. She she looks she uh uh sister Sharon she is like you know what I'm saying you ain't in the you ain't in the in the club parking lot ministering. You know what I'm saying? It's like if people that do that type of stuff, right? But it's like you got these people that minding their business trying to have a good time. And you going to stand up and get to telling them about a God that they don't want to know, that they not thinking about, they have drunk. You know what I'm saying? And you going to sit here and try to explain to them something about God? That just, I mean, that's just, that just wrong. That's just rude is what it is. Yeah, it's like, what'd you, what'd you, what'd you, what would you do if you sitting here trying to learn the word and somebody came out and they came in here like, hey, instead of learning about God, you guys should go drinking. How would we feel? Like no, why don't you do what you doing, and let us do what we doing? But yeah, that's why that's why we don't go out. You know what I'm saying? And 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 uh and try to teach people the books that don't put don't put your pearls before a swine, right? And um a lot of times we we for our own we do it for our own pride. A lot of times we we want we want people to believe or we want people to know that that you know uh, who we are and what we know about God. You know what I'm saying? And we do it for our own confidence. We do it to fulfill, you know what I'm saying, our own insecurities. You know what I'm saying? We try to build ourselves up with it and, and and try to exert ourselves in certain areas to make up for lack that we have internally. But instead, what we need to do is address the lack. If we if we can just sit, if you look at the most, let, let's just look at the models, right? If you look at Yahushua himself, right? Yahushua walked around. And you won't see anywhere. I know it seems like it, but read it. You won't see anywhere at any time that Yahushua went up to a random group of people that's minding their business and then start preaching to them. In every single scenario that you're going to see with Yahushua, he goes to a place that people are worshiping or serving the most high God. Right? Even when they say that he was with sinners, not one time will you see that he went to sinners. Sinners came to him. He never went into a sinner space. It was like, hey, what y'all doing? Why these people were sinning? Instead, sinner said, oh, that's Yahushua. Let's hang with them. And he didn't deny him. So that's the model that, that we choose to go by. We stand, we want to be the lighthouse, right? And anybody who need that light, anybody who need that direction, they can come to where the light is. If they don't have no interest in doing that, then you know what I'm saying. I hope I hope they enjoy. You know what I'm saying. I hope they I hope they have great joy in they sin, right? Because that's right for them. If it's if it's for them, that's right for them. Most High God made vessels of destruction and vessels of of honor. You know what I'm saying. And what we need to do is we just need to position ourselves to be vessels of honor by being obedient to the Most High God and and obeying them uh, and obeying the, uh, the commandments of the Messiah. Right, if we do that, man, we we we'll, we'll be good. And if we keep that law, we'll be great. We'll be better than good. Books say, books say it'd be like a man. I forget where it's at. He's like it'd be like a man who 
who uh who saved his who saved his life out life out of a burning house. That's what it's like to just barely make it. But I, I take that. You want to be great in the kingdom, no? You might want to keep some law. <clears throat> might want to keep some law, right? Might want to keep some law. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want to have no aspirations of barely making it. That's crazy. <clears throat> Look, if you got aspirations of barely making it, you might make one mistake and not get in. You know what I'm talking about? When your aspirations are being great, well, maybe you got some room to slip and fall. No intentions of doing the no slipping, no falling, but just saying, you know what I'm saying? You make a mistake. Maybe you make a mistake and you just in the middle tier instead of great. You know what I'm saying? What they say, shoot for the sky and land on the clouds or whatever it is. The weird stuff they be seeing people be saying. I'm going to shoot for the dark sky. Anyways, any other questions? What, we, what else we got? Oh, so we got to pull Brother T and take on the pastor. You definitely got to take on the pastor. Yeah, we can definitely take on. So now that's something that we could do now. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we could do. We could bother these people, you know what I'm saying, in a in a setting where they uh they want to hear about when they hit want to hear about God, we can go in there and bother them people. You know what I'm saying? I just don't be having patience for that stuff sometimes. But yeah, as long as somebody gathering and they, you know what I'm saying, gathering with the pers- purpose to hear about God, ain't nothing wrong with it then. You know what I'm saying? You do it with respect. Remember when Paul went, they gave Paul the opportunity to speak. He didn't. He didn't. He he wasn't protesting. He wasn't disruptive and nothing like that. They gave Paul the opportunity to speak. Right when Yahushua spoke, you know what I'm saying. They gave Yahushua the opportunity to speak. You know what I'm saying. So that's 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 how that's how it should be. You know what I'm saying. This thing will move on this time. One of these days, you know what I'm saying. It's gonna be a man of God. It ain't got to be me. It's gonna be a man of God, and they're gonna be like, "Yo, why don't you say some words?" That man of God gonna light these churches up. You know what I'm saying? T.D. Jake gonna be like, T.D. Jake gonna make a mistake. He gonna see a man of God and be like, yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you just say a couple words? And they gonna broadcast his butt on national television. He gonna light they butt up. All y'all better turn from sin. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? He gonna light they butt up one of these days. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be somebody who's gonna make the mistake and get a wrong person the mic. But really, it's the right person that get a mic. Get like Joe, brother Phil. What do you mean get like Joe? <laughs> I want to get like Joe. Moses didn't have no room, so I'm not banging on it. Yeah, I don't want to get like Joe. Y'all willing though? You know what I'm saying? But I need some mercy, man. I need some grace and mercy. I didn't have a lot. But I still need a little bit more, God. Need a little bit more. All right, let's uh, let's pray out.